I think at this point, just about every WordPress site already has a form plugin installed on it. You know what I'm talking about. Something to collect user information, email addresses, inquiries, you get the picture. But a form plugin can actually be so much more than that. And there's one guy who's been building a plugin over the last seven years that's really pushing the boundaries of what's possible. In this video, I want to show you why WS Form is the last form plugin you'll ever need to install on your website. We'll take a look at its coolest features, why it's ridiculously fast and flexible, and how only one developer has built this plugin from the ground up. In fact, I want to take just a moment to tell you a little bit of the fascinating story behind WS Form. Mark Westgard, the plugin's creator, didn't start out as a developer. In fact, for 20 years, he ran a successful web agency, working for all kinds of top brands. And now he's pouring all that expertise into his plugin. And he's not just coding. He also handles all the support tickets too. This allowed WS Form to evolve organically. When customers requested new features, Mark was able to add them into the plugin one by one. Just take a look at these examples of how WS Form is being used on some fantastic websites. First up, we have WPSpeakers.com. Now this side actually has two sides to it. There is a database that speakers can join, which uses WS Form. Speakers can fill out their information, including a bunch of info about their company, and there's other custom sections for things like their bio and languages that they're able to present in. Then once they submit that form and register themselves as a speaker, you can actually see all of the potential speakers on the find a speaker table. Now this is actually using our Post Table Pro plugin. And we have a blog post that you can read more about if you want to learn how to create these posts and list them as a table using WS Form and Post Table Pro together. So you can see here, these are the speaker names. Right now, the table is sorted by name. But if you want to sort by topic, you can click on this one here. Or if you want to search for a speaker, you can also search like this. There are also these custom filters. For example, you can search by underrepresented. Next up, we have the WP World. And WS Form is used extensively throughout this website for registration, editing profiles, login pages, forgotten password pages, contacting, and sponsorship forms. They also use post management add-on with advanced custom fields to create posts from forms and the user management add-on for user-related forms. You can see here, this sign up form is powered by WS Form. And one more example of the form plugin being used in a less conventional way, we have the admin bar. And on this page here, we have a responsive font size calculator. If I change the size of the text that I want to work with, then all of these fields will update automatically. You can also update the scale and see how that affects the text size as well. Now, I just want to clarify that this video is not sponsored, but we do have a great working relationship with Mark, and he's offering all our viewers 20% off any edition of WS Form by using the code BARN2 at checkout. Just click on the first link in the description below to check it out. So I've installed WS Form on my demo website, and let's take a look at how to create a new form in the plugin. Now, if I click on Add Form, you can actually see there there are a bunch of templates. In fact, they have dozens, possibly even hundreds of these templates to choose from. And you can click on each of these different tabs based on what kind of form you need. But just to keep things really simple, I'm going to go to the popular tab and use the template of the contact form. Now, straight out of the box, something that they're doing better than any other form builder that I'm aware of is they have a totally responsive form layout. First of all, down here on the bottom, you can see this is for extra small devices and smaller and getting larger and larger all the way along. And if I slide this scale across, you can actually see how the form layout will change. And it will actually remember the layout that I use for each different size and basically adjust accordingly. On the smallest size, I want to say move this over here and that will shrink that down. But then if I bring that one over, it'll also shrink it down. So, and this will be applied to all the larger sizes as well. Maybe I wanna do that on every size except for the smallest one. Let's bring this out again all the way. Now, when I go up here, let's make this one smaller. And you can see how it just pops into place there. It's really handy. And now as I go up, this is what it looks like. And if I go down to this one, it goes back to the original layout. Then of course you have a drag and drop builder. So if you want to add 
add a new thing into the form. You can do that. You can also drag them around to change where they are. You can click on the settings and you'll see all of the settings for that specific form field on the right here. There are also advanced settings for the power users out there. And you can see there's just so many settings to pick from. But in the basics setting, you can choose things like required or hidden, and it'll warn you if you're hiding a required field. Obviously not a good idea. And this is all the options just for the URL field. Let's say I delete this field and click on a normal text field like the first name. Finding those settings there, you can see there are still dozens of different settings within just this field alone. Now up here at the top, we have some different quick actions like preview, style, submissions. And then over here on the right, we have some actions we can click on. We can see what will happen after a form is submitted. So first of all, it'll save to submissions, then it'll show a message and it will send an email. You can add new actions from the list of options and there are a lot of different actions that you can add. For example, you could add it to your Slack channel if you wanted to connect in with Slack. And then of course you can delete any action that you don't want it to do. Let's have a look at the preview of this form, which is something that will actually update in real time. Here we have the preview on the right and if I swap anything around at this point, it'll actually update on the form itself as well. So I could even move this up to the top here and the preview updates in a live sort of way. Now, just focusing on the preview page for a moment here at the bottom of the page, we actually have a debug console and this is actually really handy for a couple of reasons. First of all, there is this great tool called Populate, and it will just give a bunch of dummy data into the form. So you can actually click on the Submit button and test the form. Now there's also a Populate and Submit button to save you even more time. There's also a Reload button so you can reload the page. You can actually view all of the submissions using this button here. And there's a log to show you all of the actions that were taken in this session. This can be really handy for debugging and and developers to check out what happened. By the way, if you go back to the toolbox settings, just click on toolbox here, you can actually visit this undo button. And this actually has a full live undo history, which you can see changing on the left there. And this will track all the changes you make in a single session. But what if you wanna build a new form that's a little bit more complicated than your experience level allows for? It might take you ages to go through all of the different form fields and find the ones that you need and how to apply them. So that's actually where this open AI integration really comes in handy. So what am I talking about? Well, on some WS form plans, you can actually download and add kind of extra plugin for OpenAI. If you have an account with OpenAI and you fund that account, then you can use your own personal secret API key in order to use OpenAI to build forms for you. Let me show you how that works. First of all, in the settings, let's go to OpenAI and you can see that I've added my license key for this particular plugin that I got from WS Form. These are all the different plugin add-ons that I can add. So here, I open AI and I copied my license key and activated the plugin here. Then I went into my open AI account and I grabbed this secret key that I wanted to use on WS form. And I put that here in this box, clicked on save. And now if I go to add a new form and click on open AI, I have this AI generated form. So let's use this here and we can actually add a prompt that will build a form for us. So I've written down a prompt that I want to try. So this prompt includes some details about a recruitment form and I want to get an idea of the people of the respondents language ability. So that was all a little bit complicated for me. So let's click on create and see what it comes up with. So this has literally used OpenAI's resources to create a form. And you can see it's got some basic information like name, email, phone number like before, but it's also got a selection for country of residence, languages spoken. It requires a proficiency level for each of these languages. Let's see how that looks in the preview. And of course, if I wanted to add more languages, I could just click on this languages spoken settings and click on the checkboxes. And I can add more fields into the checkboxes here by clicking on this add row button. Now it might be better, in fact, for this form, if these proficiency boxes would only appear if I actually chose that particular language. So if I chose English, Spanish, and French, then there could be three boxes, English, Spanish, and French proficiency, but German and Chinese wouldn't be on the form. And I can do that with a thing called conditional logic. Let's see how we can set that up. So we can click on this button here for conditional 
original logic. And we can set a new row, a new condition. And let's say select from the languages spoken. If the row that's checked is English, then we need to add here English proficiency is required and English proficiency is visible. Else English proficiency is hidden. So that automatically refreshes. And if I select the English, then English proficiency will show up. But if it's not selected, it'll be hidden. And I can apply that same conditional logic to all of the different languages in order to hide all of those different boxes. But as you can see, conditional logic is a highly underrated but absolutely fantastic tool for creating beautiful forms that are not cluttered with a bunch of different data points, at least until you select something and those data points can show up later. And once again, I find myself saying that WS form has the most advanced conditional logic features out of any form builder that I've worked with. Now over in the styles tab, we can really make our forms look beautiful. You can set up the color palettes and edit every visual aspect of the UI. So let's click on our standard light style and click on edit. That's gonna bring us into a styler, not so different from a theme editor. Let's populate our form so we can see it with some details. Now within the form, you can see we can choose the color palette. We can actually edit any of these different colors as needed. You can just choose a different one, for example. I don't really like that color, so let's just go back to black. Maybe let's choose something dark blue. And then for the base contrast color, let's keep that nice and white. We also have options to update the borders of the form itself. And then each aspect of the form can be further refined. For example, within the field, we can change the border style to be rounded or we can make it thicker. Any of these items within the form itself can be edited in the styler. Now it's worth noting that Mark takes accessibility very seriously and he works quite continuously to make sure that WS form complies with the highest industry standards. And it is an ongoing job as things get updated all the time. Do be mindful when you're playing around with the different colors, for example, that you maintain a high level of contrast. And there are some great tools to help you choose the opposing shades of colors, which is super handy if you don't know where to start. I should also mention that WS Form comes with unparalleled custom field integrations. They're integrated with advanced custom fields, advanced custom post types, Metabox, Jet Engine, Pods, and Toolset. They also have single click form generation for those plugins. So for example, if you want a form to create a post from a custom post type, you simply go to the add new post management and then choose your custom post type and WS form will automatically build a bi-directionally integrated form in just one click. Now, as you can see from this list, there are literally dozens of different integrations that come in the form of add-ons which you can activate within this plugin. You can see I've activated OpenAI, Slack, and MailChimp. So you can see in this list here, there are a bunch of different CRMs and email managers that you can include. And once you connect those tools in the plugin, you'll see new form templates that you can build in just one click, which are based on the fields that are needed by the third-party tool. So in the case of MailChimp, for example, if you have different audience segmentations within MailChimp, then WS Form will be able to see those different audience segmentations and the data that you you need to collect for them and it'll allow you to build a form based on all of that data in just one click as I mentioned. Well I feel like I could go on about this plugin all day so I'm gonna cut myself off right here. Watch this video next if you're shopping for new plugins for your WordPress or WooCommerce site and click on this link here to get yourself a copy of WS form. Just don't forget to use the code BARN2 at checkout for 20% off. And of course thanks for watching.